What's going on, you guys? Crash and Crusher here, back with another video. And today, we're doing an update on Crusher. So, uh oh, that's not good. <laughs> so, yeah, had to take the transmission out of it, and I'll go show you why. So, I believe the last time you even saw Crusher driving was in the video with mainly motors. But, long story short, I figured this out the input shaft now pops right out, so it lost the clip that holds the input gear on. That's not the biggest problem. Biggest problem is both these axle bearings leak a tremendous amount of oil. It actually leaked almost half of it out from just sitting for a couple weeks. Um, and I actually know why. And I think I, f um, for all you guys who run 820s, I think, unless a lot of people already do this, I believe, I figured it out. So let me grab that 820 right there and I'll go show you. So if we look at this 820 here, let me go get the light. So if we look at the 820 that I just pulled out of the mower, you can see underneath where that bearing seats is a puddle of oil. It's actually on both sides. And upon further inspection, it wasn't really leaking from this axle itself, like where the axle slides in. It was actually leaking underneath the bearing. So as you can see, there's silicone over top of the bearing. When you seal it up, you lay it all around, you obviously go on top of the bearing. I never thought to do this. I don't think a lot of us thought to do this, but what I did on this one is I lifted the bearing up. See, I laid silicone underneath, set it back down, then went over the top. I did that on both sides. And I set this thing like this overnight so, you know, all the oil would drain to this side and not one single drop dripped out. So, yeah. What you got to do to prevent these from leaking, or at least stop it leaking a lot, is when you're putting this back together, you lift it up and put silicone underneath, because as you can see, that one hasn't leaked at all. And I didn't do it on this one, and this one leaks a lot. But there's other updates that are going on besides just the transmission, so let me go explain. So as you guys know, ever since I rebuilt this thing the first time, I swapped in from the original 17.5 horse single cylinder OHV motor, uh, 19 and a half opposed twin now this oppie has served me really well for I think I think about a year and a half maybe my judging time is terrible but it's been this thing has been submerged underwater meaning like I've hit water so hard water comes up carburetor sucked it in carburet the original carburetor has been cleaned um, it's been flipped over barrel rolled upside down like this, this thing has been beat has been beaten on for a long time, um, and it's starting to show its uglier side. It's either needing a rebuild or it's fully done. Um, the last ride it did successfully was the last time you saw this thing was when Alex was here, and that was the last one it survived su successfully. Everything other than that, now it won't. Last time I took it out, it made it about four, like two and a half miles out, and then it died. Wouldn't run. We pulled it back. I did new coil. It ran decent enough. I got another two and a half miles out, and it died again. We had to pull it back. And ever since then, I couldn't get it to start. Every time I tried to pull it, gas was shooting out of the exhaust. So I thought, oh, okay, the carburetors did. So I drained the oil, put new oil in, bought another whoops, brand new carb, put it on. It's doing the same thing. Won't run. So... And I think it's not getting spark again because it's not even trying to fire. And that was like a $60 coil because I was tired of the cheap Chinese shitty ones not working. So something is seriously wrong, I'm pretty sure, internally on this motor, which is unfortunate because I do like it. But I think I'm going to do away with this one. I may scrap it. I may fix it. Depends on how I feel about it. Um, and what I'm going to be swapping in is, is this bad boy, a 25 horse... You can see right there, 25 horse V twin Intech motor. Now, I got this whole tractor, Craftsman DLT. This was for free. This was my aunt's old mower. It's got a six speed MST, as you guys, I think I showed this off in one of my previous videos. Um, thing is totally fine. The only thing I've ever done is I took the deck off. It's got plow gear on the front, so complete mower. The engine runs amazing. Um, can't really show you right now because the battery's dead. Oh. So, oh well, but this thing was taken care of really well. It was been, I mean, it's been sitting for, like, it was sat for three years before I got it, but it was in a huge storage container, which 
was completely sealed so no mice got into it um, the gas was drained out of it um, the, the oil was changed so it was taken care of so I'm really excited to be swapping this motor to that tractor um, and obviously I'll be pulling the fenders and other stuff to as spare parts I'm thinking about transferring the steering wheel over because it's nice rubber and it's more grippy um, yeah the steering has got some issues I think the steering shaft is actually even bent because look this whole thing wants to orbit up this way when you turn it I'll try to see as you can see but that's not the focus today the focus today is I got to swap in that new transmission um, I'm not sure I'm probably not going to be dissecting the one that's broken um, until I get this thing going again but yeah so I guess the re rebuild isn't over yet <laughs> I'm gonna be adding a few things um, unfortunately I never got to hear this thing with the exhaust pipes that Rob helped me make but we'll get to hear how they sound on the Intech but I'm really leaning towards keeping this motor and just fixing it um, I'd love to do ported heads and other work valve springs so I've been wanting to build an engine for a while now so that's where I'm kind of leaning towards um, I don't think I ever showed you guys this this is a this was actually the square tubing that I when I had my stupid emergency brake and I kept cutting the back of my leg I cut it off grounded the welds down and I welded this up as a nice foot pedal um, I gotta give a shout out to give her the beans 97 for this idea this is literally a factory craftsman transmission mount, one of those style, and just it bolts right on perfectly. It's got factory holes, so you just bolt it on and just tighten it. Um, what I did is I tightened the nut. So you tighten a nut, hand tight to where you need it, then you tighten another nut against it, and then perfect, it's got play. I gotta take it off and paint it. As you can see, it leaving rust on my mower, but threw it on there temporarily. But um. Yeah, enough talk. Let's start getting the new 820 in, and then we'll work on taking this motor. So it's a couple days into the future. Um, so I got the second 820. I brought it out here, and I went to go put it in. As you can see, there's a big oil mess. Um, clearly, there's no transmission in it. Let me go show you what happened. So when I got this 820 locked up and sealed up, I set it aside, as you saw waiting for when I needed it and um the four bolts that go in the front I had them just sitting in there because I didn't want to lose them well apparently this top one here I don't know if you can see uh let me find my light as you can see that top motor bolt it pushed right through that hole so I'll show you with this keyway yep goes right through so that's got to get TIG welded up because when I went to go put it in, it just started puking out all of its oil. Here you can see over here, there's that little chunk of aluminum it pushed through. So that was unfortunate, but yeah, that's all that went wrong. Other than that, this trans is fine. I checked on the, it's got a little welded locker in there um, from uh, Red Z02 style. Yeah, there's no play in that. So just got to fix that, and then this can be. Um, Back in the tractor, this that one I still have yet to tear into because I got to see what exactly is going on. Because um, I didn't mention this in the last clip, but not only did that pop out, um, sometimes certain gears were hard to grab and find. So we're gonna see if we're gonna see what was going on with that. But since this is on hold till I can find a TIG welder, uh, let's start dropping. Out. First things first. You gotta take the catch can hoses off, you gotta disconnect the fuel lines. Um I gotta take off all the electrical. I'm gonna try to see if I can reuse this key switch so I don't have to keep so I don't have to swap. Because so I wanna try to keep the like the solenoid and stuff in so I can just swap motors over. Um because if I I wanna try to make it so I can if that engine fails I can just swap in the next one and leave the wiring alone. But if I have to, I'll swap the entire wiring harness. Um, obviously, the way we hooked up the tether switch, the tether switch has to go with it because that's directly wired in to the tether kill. Because the way this whole thing works is obviously the starter itself died. But basically, you can use this. The key wasn't frozen. Turn the engine over and start it. But 
This does not kill the engine at all. This kills the engine. You pull the tether off and that would kill the engine. But if you leave the key in the on position, it'll override the tether. So the only way to kill it was with the tether. But the way, the cool way about doing this is if you have to get, if you had to get off your tractor um, and push it, you can leave the key on um, and then, you know, you're good. If, but if you had the missing, if you had the tether gone, you're fine. So it was kind of a, kind of thrown together because this, I was trying to get this ready before TTC. I was coming down to days. Um, but yeah, so that's how that works. You know, obviously, like I said, the something, the stupid spring that pushes the starter gear up died. So that's why that's like that. Um, uh, I'm going to be keeping this hand throttle in there because the, the reason why that's in there and see it's hooked up right there. The reason why that is there is because um, I had a foot, as you know, I had the foot throttle on there, but the cable snapped on me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be keeping this on there because if the, my cable snaps on that thing, I can just throw that on and bam, I can get home. Um, I'm going to try the exhaust that Rob helped me make. Um, thanks again, man. I'm going to try to see if I can swap those over to the Intec because I never had a chance to see what they sounded like on the Oppie. But I may do that. I may not. If I don't, I'll definitely save them for this because... I really want to do a full rebuild on this engine, but, um, yeah, so, enough talk, let's start getting this thing stripped down. Well, guys, I gotta say, I pulled this, I took the bolt out, which, it came right out, and this pulley slid right off, like, nothing. So, I was very surprised with that. Um, I've had a few questions about what I use as a spacer for my pulley. All it is is just a socket with a little chunk cut out there with a Dremel for the keyway. And yeah, holds the pulley right up. Works good. But yeah, um, shout out to Phoenix Pulleys. This is a five. Well, it's a. I kept saying it's a five inch, but realistically, it's a 5.25 inch Phoenix pulley. You can see, sealed pulley. It's been holding up great. Um, here's my upgraded tie rod. All we did was welded some it's a stock craftsman and some angle seal welded on the top. No bends. So. Definitely recommend doing that. Um, I had to take that out because the angle seal flange didn't clear the pulley. So now I just gotta disconnect fuel lines and hope that none of these bolts break off in the engine. Guys, in a short time later, we got the old oppy removed. It's kind of sad seeing this thing like this because it was sitting in this the very spot on the driveway in the very same condition that it was uh, for a long time. No transmission and engine until I found that one. So. Quite the depressing scene, but soon it'll have that baby in there. Um, kind of checking out wiring now to see if I can make this wiring harness setup work. Um, the only part about the oppy one that wouldn't work is this, the four pin hookup, because that has a six pin. Um, but I was looking and I was hoping that all I had to do was swap out the wires for this key switch. And that might honestly be all I have to do because I'm looking on all the safety switches and um, the um, there's only one that I have connected and that was the one for this stupid thing um, so other than that it looks like everything else is gonna line up so right now I'm gonna clean this up a little bit before I start tearing off that motor and then uh, yeah once I get that motor off then we're gonna start Verifying a few things and throw it on. All right, let's get to work. Okay, right so it's been a couple months into the future, and I have been slacking a little bit on finishing up this motor swap. Um, last time, I believe I recorded anything on this, I was starting to take the Intec apart, or not really apart, but getting everything disconnected in order to motor swap it. I got the electrical unplugged. I got the fuel off. Um, I still have to take the throttle cables off, um, take the pulley underneath and the belt off, and then theoretically this thing should pop loose. Um, so that's what I'm going to finish working on right now. Um, as you can see, it's night, so it's going to be a little bit of a pain to film and do that. So I think I'm just going to cut to when this motor's out and I'm getting ready to bolt it into crusher. So I will be right back with you guys. The engine is loose. So, um, 
So we're going to try to hopefully just pull it right up. I'm hoping these pipes going down into the muffler will just pop, pop right out. But if they don't, then I'll have to take all this old plow gear assembly off. But yeah, so far so good. Um, yeah, we're going to try to pull this engine and if all goes well, should be a smooth swap directly into crusher. Um, other than having to figure out like electrical and stuff, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So for now, let's pull this the rest of the way out and I'll see you guys at Crusher. Well, guys, there we go. I got the motor on just on the chassis of Crusher. It's not bolted in yet, but this thing is going to be shoehorned in here. I mean, it just barely, as you can see, it just barely clears the front of that hood. So definitely excited to finally have more power in here. We're going from 19 and a half. You can see right here, 19 and a half to uh, 25 and a half. So, this, or just 25, sorry. Um, so this should definitely be very, very big upgrade and definitely should be a big noticeable difference. Um, the only reason why I'm doing this is for some reason the Oppie wouldn't stay running. The last successful ride it had was when Alex was here, um, aka mainly motors for the first time. Um... That was the last successful ride it had. Every ride after that, it would get out in the woods. It would start running really bad, and then it would die. wouldn't start again. So, the Oppie is in need of a rebuild of some sort, which I'll probably do that over this winter. Um, but I definitely want to tear back into this motor because I had very good luck with it. It served me well for the almost two years of abuse I put it through. So, But, yeah, I'm excited to be testing out this Intec. But now... What I got to do is we got to get it bolted in. Um, see, there's the motor mount bolts. I want to do an oil change because I don't know how long this oil has been in here. This engine sat for four years before I got it. Um, I got to figure out the electrical. You got to hook up all that electrical. And I got to figure out the catch can because just like with the Oppie, if I roll this over, I don't want to have to clean out the carburetor and intake and stuff. So we're going to be hooking up the catch can utilizing that um and since i'm at it i'll probably do like new spark plugs and air filter um but that's future talk so currently i'm going to do what i can we're going to get this motor bolted in we're going to get the fuel tank back in uh hook up the gas gas lines probably replace all the fuel lines and stuff um so yeah um and i also want to show you guys this so for the longest time on crusher i ran a five inch pulley in the front and a six inch in the back here's my five inch pulley right here but for the longest time, I also had the ROMS Reworks um, gear set that speeds up the gear. Here, I'll show you right here. It makes this gear smaller and it upgrades this gear and it makes the ratio a little bit better. So it gives you more speed with the, with the ability to run bigger pulleys front and rear. Um, but the only problem was we figured out is if you run those, it's a lot harder on your shift keys, unless if you're doing just drag racing, the ROMs gears are fine, but if you're doing off-roading, it's very hard on your shift keys. So what I'm gonna do is I'm switching from a five front and a six back to a six inch pulley in the front. As you can see, it's just regular six inch pulley. I had to weld it up. Um, I will say some of these welds actually came out pretty decent. Damn camera would stay focused. You can see. Not bad. So that's going on the front. And then we're going to a 5 inch on the back. So it's basically the same ratio. Well, it's not the same. Well, it's the same pulleys. Just different ratio. Rather than having the. It's going to be more. Less turns of the front pulley. No. Yeah. Less turns of the front pulley. For more rotational mass on the rear pulley. That got me mixed up. As you can see, these both of these pulleys are already drilled with the holy pulley. Shout out to Mr. Studebaker for that. Um, yeah, and here's Crusher's 820. Um, this is just the five speed. Actually, I want to give you guys a little tip here. Whenever I tear these apart, um, before I go to put these back together, I take off all of these ends and I pack these all as much as I can full of grease because... There's O-rings here, so it's kind of sealed off, so you can't really get too, too much oil in there. So I figured to extend the life of these needle bearings by packing all these full of grease, it should definitely help. I mean, these things can now spin 
very easily. Um, same thing with these seal bearings. Um, I like to pull these off, pack these full of grease. Um, I pack these full of grease as well. So what I just do is I pull them off and I grease the shaft that this rides on because this, like with this one, it slides off. So just put some grease on that, then it works just as good. So yeah, enough transmission talk. We're going to get these pulleys on. Obviously can't put this one on yet because I need the trans together, but yeah, I just figured I'd share that tip in the new pulley swap. So let's get some more work. I guess that's the next day. Um, I started doing some work to the pulley system. I had to, like I said, I was going to put a six inch pulley up front, but um, I also, while in the process, replaced that idler pulley because the bearing was done. I also added a belt guard there. That just kind of helps take away some of the tension because this belt, the way it is, it's kind of big but the size smaller than that is a little too small, so I go with that. Um, but as you can see, the pivot point for the clutch right there, the pulley actually hits that, and un unless I make a double pulley clutch, the uh, pulley won't clear it. I knew for a fact that if I floored the clutch at the six inch pulley, it was gonna hit, but I didn't realize that it was gonna hit there. So I'm just gonna run the five inch for now and I'll run the six on the back until I make some sort of a double clutch unit, probably on this brace here and make that work. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's what the pulley setup's gonna be for now until until I can do the double system, but oh well, it should do all right. Um, I'm currently working on figuring out, so the frame still had a little bit of flex even after I added a couple of these braces on here. So I want to try to add a few more or move them to a different location. Uh, the one here, as you can see, it's welded to the angle steel. Let me get the belt out of the way that is welded and bolted to the frame. What I want to do is on the flat part here that runs along the frame, I want to cut that off on both sides. Then the flat part of the angle steel here, I want to weld on the inside, nice big bead all the way up until where this brace is here and here. But I wanna move this brace up a little bit so it's connected to the flat part of the frame to try to get more grab. And then this one here, I'm pr probably gonna be leaving, but I have been debating on cutting it off, moving it up to here, and then adding another one down closer to the transaxle to try to get more of a grab on this back part. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on marking up that here and but that's probably not going to be a today thing that's a little later i want to try to get it on four wheels first but that's definitely the plan before this thing is off-roaded um i have just on the intech the only thing hooked up is the starter wire because i just wanted to see if this thing was going to start but even if this key switch started it there still wouldn't be any way to kill it so we gotta add like a either a tether kill switch or like an on off switch but either way will work um but this engine will need an oil change because the oil that's in it it's pretty pretty gross um and needs new fuel lines this fuel line is pretty shot and it's leaking on the import for the carb um and i also just realized that apparently the intake on this is aluminum normally they're plastic so that's a plus um but yeah i'm gonna work on getting figuring out the catch can situation and trying to connect my new foot pedal with a throttle cable so definitely have some work left here but we are making progress so i will be back with you guys when i make a little bit more progress all right guys so it's been a couple days and i got crushers 820 all back together, sealed up. I got it locked into gear and I can spin this pulley with no effort at all. It just spins around and both axles are spinning. So that tells me that everything is indeed put back together right, which is awesome. Um, and like I mentioned before, what I now do on my 820s is on this one here, this one leaked a bunch of oil from those axle bearings. And obviously, you know, when you put sealant all around here, you go up over the bearing, blah, blah, blah. And everyone kept saying, it's your bearing's bad, it's leaking from the axle. But realistically, there was no oil. Like, if you looked at it really closely, there wasn't any oil coming from the axle. So, what I realized is there was a puddle always forming at the bottom. See, right there, and it was underneath that. 
So what I realize is it's because when you put your silicone all the way around, you go over the bearing. So this is getting sealed. Underneath gets none. So what I do now is I lift these axles up and I put silicone underneath. So when you put the bearing down, it gets sealant under there. And what I did is I did a test. So I set this one up at an angle. I didn't film this, obviously. Oil leaked out of that side. Before I had to re-tear into this one, I set this one up at an angle and no oil came out. So to save yourself money on gear oil, lift this axle up and put silicone under there. Save yourself in the long run. But yeah, this, this the inside here got all TIG welded up from when because the a bolt and these two front mounting points. The top one got tightened too much because I think the bolt was too long or something, and it pushed through the case, so oil was puking out of there. So I got that TIG welded up. Um, so yeah, this thing is ready to go back together. We can get into reverse. Try to get... Wow, this thing's being stubborn. There. And spin it, and reverse also works. So yeah, this thing is good to go so we're gonna start getting this into crusher so it'll be on at least four wheels and easier to work on for the motor and um as for the motor i haven't made too too much progress on it because i've kind of been slacking but motor's still the same in there so today's we're gonna be making some more progress so before i even get the transmission in um so here's the backing plate i don't remember if i showed you this but um when i welded these new mounts on the backing plate would no longer fit so i cut some chunks out squared it off and now it perfectly clears and it's, hit, it's resting against here perfectly flat and oh, it's hanging low on this side but there we go now it's sitting perfect so at least i'll this thing will be able to look like it's somewhat original or somewhat stock form um but yeah, so this is going to get, I'm going to drill new holes, probably one here, one at the top, bolt it on on each side, so that'll be good. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on, like I said before, cutting this angle still back a little bit, and moving this up to the frame and welding it. So I'm going to get to work on that, and then we'll get this trans back. It's been a hot minute since I've gotten any work done on Crusher, but I've been making some slow progress here and there. So first things first, as you can see, I got the 820 in. Went in nice and easy. Um, for Christmas this year, my parents got me 24 by 11 by 10 D Stone Swamp Witches. Um, they also gave me some other tires for Christmas, which I will show you guys later for a different project. But yeah, D Stone Swamp Witches definitely a lot wider than my last one, so it, it shouldn't be as as uh, easily tippable. It should grip a lot better. Um, got a Red Zero Two, aka Sean Meyer style Valsum upgrade. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that should definitely help make this thing look a lot gayer. <laughs> um, and I also got to give a shout out to Red Zero Two because he sold me these 10 inch 4x4 four, um, four four bolt pattern um, wheels. So thanks for that, man. I appreciate it. Um, and I got the Indec to the point where it actually runs. I had to do some carb work to it. I also pulled the plugs out. I took some sandpaper, cleaned them up a little bit, and it does run. Um, I'll show you that here in a minute. It's technically to the point where it now drives. Um, it just doesn't have a foot throttle, and it doesn't have a kill switch. And the frame still flexes, so that's actually going to be my focus of the day today. Um, I probably should have done this before I put the trans in, but unfortunately, i got to drop that trans one more time. Because i got to cut that frame brace out, and i got to cut that frame brace out. Because with the way it is now, this transmission still flexes. Our transmission this whole frame still flexes and I don't want that so I have a I have a, a whole plan on how I'm going to tackle fixing that so um, yeah first things first is I got to get this tractor turned around I got to get that transmission out of there and yeah we will go from there so I'll see you guys when that transmission is out a short time later the transmission's out I also thought it would be a good idea to take the battery out because there's gonna be sparks flying everywhere so yeah, now I got plenty of room to take what I need out, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna go get the grinder, and guys, well I got this back one cut out, I grinded it smooth, and I just touched it up with the paint can a little bit, not pretty, but enough to make it look somewhat, uh, somewhat good, and to try to prevent it from rusting a little bit, so I'm gonna wait for this to dry, and then we're gonna work on getting that one out, 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to get the transmission back in place, uh, test fit all the um, new braces, tack weld them in, take the trans out, fully weld them in, then this frame should hopefully be solid enough to where I don't have to worry about frame flex killing my trans axles. So yeah, we're going to let this dry, cut that one out, then I'll be back with you guys when the transmission's in and we're test fitting everything up. Alright guys, what's up? So I got a bunch of steel cut, as you can see I got some pipe. You got some square tubing seals so these two braces are going to go in the back here one's going here one's going to go up top to strengthen this up then what i was trying to do is this was the original piece i had here in the center that which i cut off what i was trying to do is i was going to try to reuse that because what i wanted to do was have two here and then one in front of the trans if i get the this camera would focus at the end of that angle steel where it's cut on each side and then what my plan was once that was in place I was going to take the welder and do a nice bead along the angle steel in the frame on each side to give this rear the rear part of the frame a lot of rigidity but the only problem was ever since I cut this steel off I was just barely short as you can see just barely short and I don't ironically I don't have any steel at all that I could use to like weld onto this to try to shim it up so instead, what I'm going to use is I have one of these EC Carburetors go-kart axles sitting around. And I know I like to use the EC Carburetors hubs as a locker in my 820s, but this one isn't the axle I like to use. The axle I usually like to use has a threaded portion on the end with a nut, and it has a, a halfway keyway to the center, then on the other side, halfway keyway. This one has... Um, it's got the two wheel keys and then it's got an axle key in the center cut out but there's nothing on the end to hold your axles on so um, I'm probably never going to use it for a locker even though I could so uh, I'm going to say screw it and use it as a frame brace why not it's plenty thick enough so yeah I'm going to get this cut up then we're going to get these tacked into place and that trans will come out we're going to fully weld and paint it up alright guys and a short time later I got all the braces welded in welded them nice and hot that brace right there, the go-kart axle part, was a giant pain because of how tight it was, but I got it in there. I got as much weld as I can on here. On this top one, I really couldn't get as much weld as I wanted to on the top, but I got some. But um, I'm fairly confident with this new setup because before I even did this, you could grab this frame and you could flex it with your hand. Now you can't do that. Um, and unintentionally, this pipe right here acts as a belt guard for the pulley. There's about a half inch of gap. And there's just enough room where I can sneak a belt up through here. So it actually works out fairly well. But yeah, with all these new braces on there, with once this thing is driving, I actually feel confident in taking this thing out on a out-of-state ride. Before, I'd be very nervous about it. But now, I'm definitely definitely um, more relaxed, if you will. Um, but yeah, now that this is done, and like I said, only one way will be for sure. And that is a beatdown slash test run which will hopefully be the next video. Um, there's a couple things I need to do. I need to get the wiring figured out because there's, no, there's nothing other than the starter. I just hooked up the starter wire so I could start it. But there's no kill switch, and um, there's no safety switches, which is kind of a good thing. But um, what I want to do is I want to get the electrical figured out before I take it on a test drive, and I really, if I can, want to get my catch can in there hooked up so gotta do that and i also gotta hook up my foot throttle so a couple small things i'm not really sure if i'm gonna record at all but i might we'll see um but yeah so now what i gotta do is i gotta go through with the wire brush gotta clean up all the slag and all that flux core then we're gonna paint it and then reinstall the transmission so yeah enough chit chat let's get to work all right, guys, so it's been uh, another couple days into the future here. Um, if the first thing you will notice on this thing that is done now is the your, the electrical is now fully done. You can throw this. Well, first, let's make sure the clutch is in. You can, that's in the on position. Then you flip the main power on, and there's now electric start. It's a push-button start. Um, now you're probably wondering why there isn't a video on that, and I did make a video on it. Um, I was trying to get that video out before this one, like the motor swab and transmission and all that, and I'm now steering um, was out. But So YouTube's been kind of screwing me over lately. Um, I've made a couple videos that I've tried to get posted, but YouTube won't let me. They said um, they flag it for review. I try to appeal it, and then 
they still didn't do it. Well, the last video that I tried to appeal, I emailed them four different times to try to say, hey, you know, what did I do wrong so I don't do it in the future? They never got back to me, so I said, screw it. I tried to upload the video again, and now they gave me a strike for some reason, and now if I violate the terms again and try to appeal it without listening or changing what I'm doing, they will terminate my channel. So yeah, I'm not really going to be taking any risk for the next 30 days, but I'm going to try to eventually figure out why it is that they won't let me upload these videos, because I do want to get them out to you guys. But anyway, that's uh, that's a rant for another time. But yeah, what I'm doing now is I'm trying to swap out spindles. As you can see, uh, this is my brace set. Put a nice brace on there so they don't bend and I just got done extending it I just welded this piece of a bolt on there so I can fit my new 19 by 7 by 8 Sun S on the front which are now mounted on rims and these are actually loaded uh, there's three gallons of washer fluid in each of these so we're adding six um, gallons to the front of this thing which will be awesome one of these tires is like 40 pounds and It'll definitely help a lot in hill climbs, and I've never had loaded fronts on this before, so each time you see me do a hill climb, it's been with the stock wheelbase and um, stock weight. But yeah, so I'm going to be swapping out this side, and once that is done, we are going to be moving on to foot pedal, or throttle, I should say. Um, the pedal I had idea, I tried to make it work. It, we couldn't get it to work properly, so I'm just going to go back to the bicycle brake handle foot pedal. Um... Oh yeah, and I finally put some rubber grommets onto this hood lift kit so when the hood is shut, it's more of a pain to get closed, but if I do this one-handed, you slide it down over these friggin' things, you put the pins in, look at that, can't get it, I mean obviously it just popped off because there's no pin, but hop, can't make it squeak when there's pins in there, so finally it'll sound like it's a normal hood again. And I'll still be able to maintain the look. So, uh, yeah. But enough chit chat. Let's get that other spindle swapped out, and let's get this those front tires on there and see what this thing looks like with brand new 19s. And uh, yeah. So I'll be with you guys. Short transformation on this thing with just a new set of front tires. I mean, these are aired up 19s. And they look more like 20s, but these things are freaking massive. Definitely a lot taller than the last ones I, the last 19s I had because these rims are actual. Um, they're like eight inch front rims for like a wheel horse. Um, before I had regular rear, like factory rear keyed rims and yeah, I definitely don't want to run those anymore because those actually will lock up if you don't remember to grease them. So yeah, we have actual bearing wheels now. They spin great. But yeah, these things are freaking massive. Definitely will help steer through the mud and um, off-road and stuff. But before I used to be able to pick this whole front end up very easily. Now I can't do that because of how much heavier it is with these loaded fronts. So I'm definitely very eager to start testing this thing on some serious hills. But yeah, now we're gonna move our way onto the throttle, foot throttle side of things. That way this thing will actually be drivable. So yeah, very, very close to driving this thing. So yeah, enough talk. Let's get to it so we can finally hit the guys. So a short time later, I got the throttle all in there. It's all connected. I'll show you what how we did it. Used the little adapter, crimped it down, and right to the bicycle thing. Uh, there is some play in this, so I think I might need to be, might need to redo it here. But we're gonna test it right now and see what it sounds like, and see how much red we can get out of it. She likes some choke. to redo the foot throttle but you guys saw it works so yeah i want to thank you guys for watching remember to like comment subscribe and tell me got tell me what you guys think about crusher being that it's fully redone with frame braces brand new motor new tires front and rear loaded fronts and uh brand new pulleys belt guards and transmission obviously and foot pedal which i'm gonna have to redo that before i do the test drive but yeah let me guys know what you think and what else do you think I should do to it, if anything? Um, I definitely want to move the front axle forward a little bit, like I mentioned before, to try to help get a little more stability on hills. 
But I don't want to do that just yet until I see how better it is with the loaded fronts. But yeah, I want to thank you guys for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video where we'll, it, we will be taking this thing on its first official test drive since it's fully re-rebuilt. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching. See you later.